Hey guys, welcome to the DevOps Pro English channel and Helm for Beginners series. Today's video is going to be about name templates in Helm chart. To understand the concept practically, we have a Helm chart in which we have YAML files for deployment and service inside the template section. Inside the deployment file, we are creating a deployment named Jinx deployment and using the Jinx image in it. And inside the service file, we are creating a service for the same deployment. If you look in the deployment file, the labels we have, app colon jinx and env colon dev, are being repeated three times in the file. Not just in the deployment file, if you look in the service file as well, we also need to provide the same labels in the selector section for creating the service related to the deployment. So, the same labels are being repeated here as well. So, the labels section here is duplicated and being repeated multiple times in both the deployment and service files. To remove such duplicate sections and make the code reusable, we use name templates inside our Helm chart. To use name templates, we have to create another file inside the templates directory, named underscore helpers .tpl. This is a template file, and as its name starts with an underscore, when running the Helm install command, Helm reads every file in the templates directory so that it can create YML files for all present Kubernetes objects. However, if any file inside templates starts with an underscore, Helm ignores them. It doesn't consider them for creating the Kubernetes object file. Therefore, the name of our file is underscore helpers.tpl. Inside this file, we define any sections or fields that are duplicated in the YAML file to make them reusable here, and then we reuse them in our YAML files. For example, if our label section is duplicated and repeating multiple times in our files, we can define them in the helpers file. To define labels, you would need to write within double curly brackets and you can give it any name, so as we are defining labels now, for easier understanding, we also give it a name as labels. Inside that, we will have our labels like app, jinx, and env, dev. Finally, we will end this define block. Now we can remove the labels from our YAML files wherever they were being used. In their place, we can write the template inside double curly brackets and the name of the defined name template, which in this case is labels. We will make the same change inside the service file as well. Now, if we save the file and run the helm install command with the dry run option to see the generated YAML files, we will see that our labels have been added to the selector section of our service file. Labels have also been added inside the metadata of the deployment file. But if you look in the selector section, our labels have been added, but their indentation is not proper. Similarly, labels have also been added inside the template section below, but their indentation is also not proper there. This has happened because whenever we define a duplicate section as a name template in the helpers.tpl file, Helm adds that undefined name template as it is inside our YAML files. In other words, it just does a copy-paste there. So, the way you have defined in the helpers file, it will add the same content in the YAML file. The spaces you used while defining will appear exactly as they are in your file wherever you are using them. So, for some fields, the spaces are sufficient, meaning their indentation will be correct, like the labels inside the metadata section are correctly indented according to this YAML. But in the selector section and template section, a few more spaces are needed to correct the indentation there. Here there is an issue of indentation, and to resolve it, we can use the include function instead of a template here. Include is a function, and a template is an action here. By using the include function, you can include a defined name template in your YAML files. However, since include is a function that takes two parameters as input, first, the name of the defined name template you want to include here, and the second parameter is our current context from where we are calling the include function which in this case is dot. So you can pass the data coming from this include function to another function by piping it to correct the indentation. The function used for indentation here is the indent function. You can pass the desired number to the indent function to specify how much indentation or spaces you want on that line. You need to pass this number. For example, in this selector section, we need two spaces compared to the labels section that has been added in the metadata. 
So, we will pass the data received from the include function to the indent function using the pipe operator and pass 2 as a parameter to add two spaces. Similarly, below, within the template section, we will remove the template action and use the include function, passing it to the indent function using the pipe operator and pass 4 to add 4 spaces before the labels. Since a template is an action, we cannot use the indent function by passing it through the pipe operator. Therefore, in this case, you need to use the include function to fix the indentation by passing it through the pipe operator and using the indent function to add extra spaces. Tables inside the metadata are appearing correctly and their indentation is proper. We can use the template action there. By making these changes, now if we save the file and run the helm install command again. This time, when the YAML files for deployment and service are generated, you will see that our labels have been added in the correct place with proper indentation. Thus, today we learned how we can define and reuse a duplicate section in YAML files using named templates in a helper's TPL file with the help of template and include functions. You will find the helper's TPL file in various charts. And there will be many named templates defined in them, which are being used somewhere in our YAML files. After understanding today's video, when you look at any chart and see the helper's TPL file or name template being included in it, you will now not have any difficulty in understanding those files. Because by now you must have understood the concept of named templates quite well. You can find all the chart files we use today on our GitHub repo. Use these files and try to perform as much practical work as you can on your own. If you have learned anything new from the video, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this series with as many people as possible so that everyone can easily understand and learn Helm. See you in the next video. Thank you.